I'm talking to Amy Wallace from Corvid Dawn Rescue. And Amy, what is your, well, what's May and June so far been like for you? To be honest, it's been um, a little bit unexpectedly busy. And we're normally busy, so we normally get sort of two or three calls a day at this time of year. Um, but uh, because of lockdown, uh, everyone's out and about. Lots of babies being picked up um, when they're not needed to. But in a good sense, lots of the babies that are also being picked up, you know, um, that probably wouldn't normally get noticed. So um, I'm getting about between six and ten calls a day at the moment. Um, okay, so these are people from where telling you what? Um, <laughs> I've had calls from, in the last week, England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Blimey. So I've had a real... Uh, yeah a real variety and all over the place so that's some, that's quite unusual too i normally cover most of the south but i'm i'm finding i'm getting calls from all over because rescues are filling up so quickly and, and are, how are people getting your number are they being given your number by other rescue centers um well there's actually a really good there's a good um network site called help wildlife uk um and lots of people are quite aware of that now and they can go on there and they can put in the postcode and they find the nearest rescue to them. Um, but because I specialise in COVID, um, uh, it's quite common. So they they want to speak to somebody that knows more about COVID when they find a jackdaw or a crow or um, or something like that. So I end up getting calls from all over because of because of the name of the charity. Okay. I think that's probably what's happening. Yeah. So so how much can you help people over the phone? Well. Um, I'm really, really, I'm pleased to say I've, I've had some wonderful conversations with people over the last, um, over the last few weeks because um, they, they're either in isolation um, and, or they're, they're shielding and they can't get anywhere. And, um, you know, you've got to be a bit careful with, with telling people to sort of do it yourself. But there's been a lot of willing couples out there to raise babies until they can feed themselves until I have space for them here um and they've been they've been brilliant and they've um they've carefully taken instructions and diets and and everything into account and done absolutely everything and I think lots of them have found it quite um well quite good really because they haven't got anything else to do I think well it's an extraordinary good. experience for people you're teaching them how to look after a wild animal that's amazing yeah yeah and I and believe me I wouldn't normally recommend it and there are some people I've also had unfortunately a lot of people wanting to um not want to bring them in because they're bored and that's that's so there's a very fine line between people doing the right thing because they don't have a choice and there's also the other end of the spectrum where I've had to explain, listen, it's a wild animal. It's not going to be a pet for you while you're on lockdown. It's got to mm -hmm. be, you know. But, there, I mean, there's more um, of the really good people out there than, than the other. So that's great. I've only had a couple of those sort of calls this week, which is, um, which is good. Most of them are really good people just trying to learn to, and just desperately want to do the right thing for this uh, baby bird um, that they've got, you know. So... That's really good. So, so do they call you back? I mean, how 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 committed are you to helping each of these people who call you? <laughs> I've got about five families under my belt at the moment that are calling me uh, or texting me on a daily basis, um, uh, just to make sure that they're they're doing the right thing if they have any questions. So. It's, so, I've never been busier. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, and and do they do they don't call you too late at night or too early in the morning? Um, no, they're not too bad. I mean, to be honest, the babies are waking me up at around five thirty, six o'clock anyway. So not, <laughs> okay. So, so let's not, let's, you know. let's focus on you here in East Garston. Tell us your situation. What you've got to deal with okay. yourself. So we've got in at the moment a uh, baby raven. Um, which is quite unusual for us. Um, we normally get crows and the usual in, but the raven was um, unfortunately fell out of the nest or was pushed from the nest probably in the middle of Bristol city centre. The, there's um, some ravens nesting there. Um, she's really underweight and she was covered in parasites um, in a really bad way. So we're just trying to get her, well, she's stable now. She's stable and she's just started eating. 
Okay, so hold on, hold on. Who, somebody picked, found her on the pavement? Tell us how she was... She was surrounded by a, a big gathering of people in the end, actually, which was a big concern because I was on the phone to this woman desperately trying to help and I could hear lots of people in the background and it drew a lot of attention. Um, so luckily she scooped her up and um, explained to everybody that she was taking her to a rescue and she wasn't just stealing her and... She couldn't fly, so she would have just been got by a fox. Um, they named her Foxy, actually, because she didn't get caught by the fox the <laughs> first night. So, um, yeah, um, there was crowds of people, and she was, yeah, she wouldn't have been in a safe spot. Um, so, uh, so this oh, woman actually, found your number online, this yeah. woman in Bristol. Well, weirdly enough, actually, um, it was really funny because her son bought me a jackdaw called Morris, two years ago and I rehabilitated Morris back to the wild and she kept my number so it was really bizarre and she she said right I know where to take this bird <laughs> oh this fantastic before. so she was in so, the right place at the right time exactly yeah yeah so that worked out really so well. did you drive to Bristol or did she bring no she was amazing she had my my baby my daughter in the background um and said look you've got a child i think <laughs> i'm gonna save you the journey so i was like oh okay thank you <laughs> that would be great so she did yeah and so she just bundled this bird into her car put it in a yeah. cardboard box or something yeah yeah that's right and yeah and yeah he came to us um and i mean it's lovely because i've got four baby crows in at the moment as well so they um they were raised by a family and they are really they're very comfortable almost a little bit too comfortable but we'll we'll wild them up they'll be fine but um they've made her feel really comfortable so she's settling in well with the four crows um okay and so is this is this in your garden in your house or in your sanctuary uh, well, they start off only when they're young um in the house and so they just start off in the bedroom when they're little and then they go into the aviary at the farm where we rent at the moment. Um, and then obviously, you know, they get released from there too. So, okay. yeah, it, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I've got two, two baby sparrows, one magpie, two baby jackdaws at the moment. Blimey. Here at home, yeah. Blimey. Um, and and these, uh, have these been rescued locally, these other ones? Yeah, most of them are. I've had a couple, I've had a couple of rooks from Lambourne actually. There's a poor lady. They keep falling down into their garden, <laughs> their neighbor's garden. So we've got Griffin and Fraggle because they just look, they, they're so, all oh, these two rooks are really, um, their heads look so big for their bodies because they were so thin. I didn't think it was really touch and go, but they're, they're both, just today, they've come off antibiotics. They were really thin. They had respiratory infection. They had um, worms. Um, so yeah, they really, yeah, miracle birds really. I don't know. I don't know how big they will get. They're, they're very runty, but they'll they'll definitely fly. So that's good. And okay. Then, so so you have this intense relationship with these young birds to keep them alive and help them to get healthy. But then, yeah. and obviously you have a lot of contact with them in that process. You're ha you're having to handle them, to pick them yeah. up, to feed them. And yeah. they bond, they must bond with you. They must know. Oh, they definitely think, yeah, they definitely think you're your mum for a while. But then you kind of just back off for a bit. And that's when I have a, a wonderful flock of of crows at the farm. Some, I've got an albino crow there who's a permanent resident. I've got um, some crows that are a little bit older and, and wouldn't make it in the wild. So they kind of welcome them into being crows after that. Um, okay, so, so they go from being Amy's baby yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to being, okay, like, I'm okay, actually a bird and I'm I'm going to live with these other birds. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. you just back off, you know, you've got to back off. If you carried on doing the little neck tickles and talking to them and, you know, because when they're little, they love affection and, and they should have it, you know, mm. they shouldn't be deprived of that but um you just have to know when to stop doing that you know as they get older and they're perching and they're starting to flap then you've got to kind of like okay you're getting older now and you've got to you know eat for yourself and that's that's really that's really quite tricky because some of them they I've got this little magpie in at the moment she's she's lovely um 
but she's getting to the age where she wants you to sort of, she wants your hand in the cage for longer, so she'll hold the food in her mouth and and she'll spit it out after you've after you've turned around and then starts begging for food again so that you have to go back. So she wants attention, again. not food. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're they're yeah they're very smart. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fine line. You've got to be really yeah. It's, I mean, it sounds like a relationship between a human parent and child as well. You know, they've all got to <laughs> fly the nest at some point. But yeah, so so yeah. your ultimate, just so people are clear. Your ultimate gain, gain, um, aim is to get these birds back in the wild. That's your, oh, yeah. that's it your only sense. desire. I mean, obviously there are some yeah. who aren't physically capable of doing that, and that's your flock. Yeah, but, I mean, you've got to be. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit unique in the sense that um, I don't mind having a perm. I don't mind having permanent residence that need long-term care. I think there's a, there's a big need for it. A lot of other rescues don't have the time or the capacity to do it. So I decided to specialise in that. And any that um, were kept as pets or ill-treated, they're the ones that I wanted to spend time and really get them free-flying. If they couldn't have anything else, I wanted them to be able to fly because I think mm. that's what birds should be doing. You know, whether, they're, whether they've been tamed or imprinted on humans, I want them to have as much freedom as possible. Mm. So that's kind of what what our goal is, but yeah, there's nothing better than you know I've got birds that I released you know two nearly three years ago that will come back with a uh, very occasionally with their partners on the outskirts of where the sanctuary is and sort of you know pop back and you sort of know it's them and you know but they're well, wild mean. and they look fantastic you know and that's that's great feeling. So so. Because I, this sounds really silly, but you know when you get an insect trapped in your car and then you drive 30, <laughs> 40 miles and you let this insect out, and I'm thinking that poor bee or fly or whatever it was, it's not going to know anybody where I've just let it out. Yeah, yeah I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah. So with your bird, so this your rook from Bristol, she's yeah. going to probably, I mean, when you when you hopefully rewild her here, she will have long forgotten her roots in bristol and she'll make a new she life around done. here yeah yeah definitely i mean she might um oh you mean the raven from bristol so yes yeah, she will she i mean she might not stay with me she might i might seek out some other babies that other sanctuaries have got and that'll be over sort of near sort of swindon way on the out on the borders of swindon but either way she will um yeah, they'll they'll integrate and form their own bonds with the other youngsters that they're released with. So mm. you don't really want to ever release a bird on its own, really. Um, okay. Less of a chance, and it's better to always see them as a group or in at least two, you know, so that they can. And would 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 back. it have to be two of the same species, or could you release a raven with a crow? No, the same species. Mm. Yeah, they have mm. to. Because the wild birds, um, you know, they've got to they've got to act as they would in the wild. You know, mm. they wouldn't be. I mean, mine do sometimes hang out with with other species because they've been brought up with them. But initially, they always join their own, mm. their own kind once they're wild. Yeah, mm. and rightly so. Otherwise, it, they wouldn't be accepted. So. so the bigger birds I can see are quite robust. But you said you've got sparrows. Did you say they must be tiny? Yeah, yeah. They they're feeding every half an hour. Um, so I've had them since before. One of them was still pink with no feathers, eyes closed, um, maybe a few days old. Um, mm. And I didn't think she was going to make it. She got got by a cat. She fell out of the nest and the cat picked her up. And um, she had an abdominal um, like lesion there. And that, that cleared up really well. And, yeah, she's doing great now. She's fully feathered. She's perching. She's a little bit odd. She has a little slight neck twitch, which I'm hoping will will go. Um, she's getting better and better every day. But, um, yeah, she was amazing. And then the other one, unbelievably, Penny, was in the back of my thatch on my own house. Hmm. <laughs> I, I just could hear this noise and bing. Knowing what a baby sparrow sounds like, I knew straight away what it was. And I, it ended up in my bag of... Um, sheep's wool my sheep have just been shorn and I left it there deliberately in case any birds fell out of the nest I knew they were nesting and this little guy had had all its feathers pecked out of his head so 
they rejected him for some reason. So I popped him straight in with the other one, and um, and they're the same age, so it's perfect. But yeah, I'm, I'm concerned because I've got Swift nesting at the front and Sparrows at the back, and I'm just like, no. I can't Please do don't. Nobody else fall yeah. out of their nest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I try and just look straight forward. <laughs> It seems to happen to me all the time. <laughs> so, so just to remind people when a bird needs rescuing and when it doesn't, yeah. because obviously they don't always need rescuing. No, I've had a few like that. Uh, I'll give you a great example. Last night I had a call from a lady. She said, I've got this baby jackdaw. It's sat on the floor. It can't fly. It's like, okay, but is it injured? Is there anything wrong with it? Well, no, it looks okay. Okay, well, they don't necessarily always fly. They, they have to learn to fly, and it takes about um, a, up to a week sometimes. So a bird will be on the floor, and it will just be practicing. And people think instantly if they can't fly, there's something wrong with them. And I think that's the biggest misconception. Mm. And if they take time. So you just, you know, and they're not scared of humans because they sort of, she was saying, it's not moving away from me. I thought, well, it hasn't gained any fear no. of you yet. So they're, they're very friendly little things. Um, so eventually, she, I said, look, stand back and just watch for the parents. They'll feed every half an hour, 45 minutes. So about 10 minutes later, she messaged me and said the parents came down and sort of shouted at it as if, what are you doing? <laughs> You're those humans, you know. And the jackdaw sort of scuttled off and they, they encouraged him right at the top of a tree. Um, and he went to roost with his family. But had she had picked him up and took him to a rescue... You know, it would have been a whole a whole thing. That yeah, yeah, happened. yeah. So how that jackdaw was grounded, basically. How did the parents get it off the ground if it couldn't fly? Oh, so they just communicate with each other. They just they just chat him and chat back and forward and encourage him away. And then he was hopping up low branches, and that's how they get up in the evening. They just go along the the, the hedges or whatever and find a tree and oh, that's okay. they get him high. Okay. But, um, no, the, nothing nothing wrong with them and the same with them small birds too song birds they'll they'll sit there and hop around on the lawn and you know around people's bird feeders and stuff and they're absolutely fine as long as they're alert and they're hopping around and they're quite active um you'll always know if something's wrong with a bird because it will just stay in the same place for a long time mm. um and it will look kind of puffed up mm. yeah yeah hunched yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned worms. So obviously, if anyone has chickens or any animals, you worm them regularly. So how do animals in the wild cope with having worms? Um, well, listen, I mean, they, they wouldn't make it, if I'm honest. It would just get worse and they mm -hmm. would just be, they, you know, nature's quite, quite strict, isn't it? So, you know, it's important for me that when, before I release them, they've got to be, back to full health and they've got to be able to you know survive and sustain their own weight um but yeah it, it is yeah it's that's that's just the way nature so, is. so presumably really all it. wild birds will have worms but they just have to maintain a level of weight and fitness to deal with it yeah yeah absolutely um i mean being grounded is the biggest problem for birds for too long especially babies that aren't moving around They'll get lice and, and mites and ticks and you know um, and, and black lice and things and they're just they're just horrendous. They just suck the life out of them within 24 hours. They can die, you know. So blimey! So they're um, more vulnerable if they're on the ground than if they're flying or yeah. in the trees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Parasites. Yeah. Blimey. So um, I, I need to ask you about ducks because here in East Garston, I don't know what it's like in other places on the Lambourne Valley, but we seem to have way more ducks this year. Yeah, absolutely. I've noticed it myself as well. I, I've been watching them on the river a lot because I've still got my duck in the garden. Okay, um, so tell us there. about your duck. Tell us your... <laughs> Alfred came to me at a day old, rescued from a drain in Marlborough by a belt and a brown paper bag and a broom. <laughs> this lady uh, was brilliantly rescued him from the strain. We thought it was a him, but um, Alfred's been with me since day dot. And then as Alfred got older, I realised that Alfred is not Alfred. It's, it's Frida now. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, um, she's been down to the river a couple of times, uh, but the first time she was attacked by a mum and her baby. So she was a bit young, but then she's only just getting some smooth feathers through. So, but now she's a fully 
fully grown proper duck and uh she goes down to the river and she sits on the bank and I cannot get this duck to swim in the river. So. Well, I'm not down surprised there. that she was attacked the first time. I'm, I know. We I have we have witnessed uh, ducklings being drowned by adults. You know, it's horrible. It's and horrible. it's horrible. Um, it's but the males, isn't it? As no, as the no, males. the females. The females really? Yeah, yeah. Um, but oh. they've been such big um, clutches, or whatever you call them. There's one that's had. I don't them... know what's going on. They've they've had so many babies, and I almost think that when they've lost some, they've had another clutch. It's, yeah. It does, they've um they've done extraordinarily well. Now whether that's anything to do with, I don't know. Is it anything to do with the, the lockdown? I have no clue. But, well, I, um, I know um, that some people feed them, and, and we've heard records that they, they've counted 50 ducks. Wow. Which, wow. Um, Maybe people are making more of an effort. There's actually, while I'm here, there's a lovely duck story from a couple of weeks ago of a guy um, in Lambourne who every year gets this female duck coming into his garden. We've had a, this is the second time that we've done the duck rescue. But he, this time he made a um, like a, a little mini netted aviary for her and her ducklings to sleep in at night, safe from the fox. And mm. sure enough, she turned up this year and she had all nine. Um, I think he lost one. We, we ended up with eight. And um, yeah, and then we boxed them up in a cat carrier and we walked them down the high street of Lambourne and we released them into the river when they were big enough and old enough not to be picked up by predators. Um, and it was amazing, incredible, and she'll probably be back next year as well. She's found a she's really found safe, a safe and, spot, but it's not close yeah. enough to the water for her to get there. Yeah, yeah. We walked her down the high street last time, which was a bit chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this time we thought we would, yeah, catch them up. Um, Blind. Yeah, she's a clever, clever bird. Yeah, she's done it again. But I don't know. There's. Um, I think a lot of people now have wised up to giving them chick crumb or wild bird seed. That's that's a massive benefit for ducks, rather than bread. bread. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because they get amazing. isn't it angel wing or something? Whether if they're fed too much carbohydrate, not enough protein, they don't develop their wings properly. Yeah, absolutely. It's the sugar and the salt in bread, which um, it, it causes the feathers to go like powdery and brittle. So they get like a swans get the pink feather. I don't know if you've seen any pink swans, but they, you'll see it. And, and as the pink is on the feathers, you can kind of crumble the feathers, hmm. uh, which means they can't fly to graze because ducks and you know waterfowl like to graze in fields. They should be eating lots of grass and mm. and um, vegetation, but they can't get there often to get that variety. So that disables them in a big way. Mm. But yeah, bread bread's really bad for all birds actually. All birds, not just waterfowl. Yeah. We've had a massive issue with it. Yeah. It's difficult Even, because I know there was a big campaign to educate people not to feed them bread, but what happened was people just stopped feeding them altogether. And I think a lot of the wildlife charities saying, actually, bread is better than nothing. Um, yeah, it's a massive argument that we all have. And we have like a group of people that mm -hmm. say, listen, you can feed them peas, sweet corn, mm -hmm. wild bird seed, chopped up greens, um, you know, cabbage, lettuce all these things just don't feed them bread you know um mm -hmm. and then there's the other side that say like you well it's better than getting pink wing and than dying i don't know i don't mm -hmm. know i'm i'm on i'm on the first side that you know if you're going to feed them feed them something good mm -hmm. you know it's difficult because it's such a it's kind of an, it's such an ingrained tradition isn't it to go yeah. down and feed bread because the trouble is most households have bread that needs using up that's yeah. going stale and you think oh that's great yeah. it won't go to waste we'll feed it you know exactly yeah no i understand it is it is difficult it's hard it's a hard habit to get out of so um you how how what what's your kind of average day like then you must wake up as you say what what time do the birds wake you up <laughs> so i have my um i have my daughter too obviously so that's that's been really hard for me this year. I think I underestimated how difficult it was going to be mm. to raise a child and run a, and a bird sanctuary. And mm. the reality of it is this year has really, it's been really, really tough. There's been mm. days where I just thought I don't, I can't, like at the moment I'm at full capacity and I can't take anything else in because mm. 
I've got to be able to be on top form to be, you know, looking after everybody. So mm. um, I get up at 5.30. Um, I go into the um, spare room of our house and I clean everybody out. I feed all the little ones. Um, I medicate the ones that are poorly um, and on antibiotics. Um, and then I go down and have some breakfast and then I go back up and do another feed. Um, then I get my daughter ready, um, and then I have to feed them again at midday, um, and again just before bed, which I've just done now. And I'll probably do my last feed after this, and then I draw the curtains as the sun starts going down, and then it's a large glass of wine. <laughs> mm. And they and they, but they do sleep through the night. You don't. Yeah, they do. It's a blessing, actually. That they do. Yeah. So. They, so they must be governed by the light. I mean, in, in yeah. The, yeah. So, yeah. But I know that kind of small yeah. mammals, you know, you hear people with lambs and stuff, they have to feed them through the night sometimes, like oh, every four yeah. hours. I mean, you know, William and Esme, um, those two were feeding every four hours. So these were your these are your sheep when they were little. Yeah. 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 And that was, wow. Yeah, that was hard work. So yeah, we're very lucky with the birds that they that they go to sleep at when the sun goes down. So for them, that's a safety thing, isn't it? You know, they would want to keep yeah. quiet at night from predators. Definitely, and it's really interesting. Even the baby crows, when they, I go in to shut them, and if it's already got dark, and I go and make sure that the curtains are closed, and they're all, you know, they um <laughs> they they get really like funny with you if you sort of say right night guys just, and they sort of make this really funny little stroppy noise like it's really important that we stay quiet <laughs> you forget how seriously they you know they don't know that they're safe or that no no it's like what are you doing why are you talking at this time of night <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> but yeah um, it's great because that's what they're supposed to do you know yeah yeah but, <laughs> and and you're still looking for a, for new um a new yeah. premises for the sanctuary. That tank that's hanging heavy now actually. It's yeah, the pressure's on for that. Um so lots just of people just, are so supportive on the page. They've all been, you know, really lovely sending messages and saying they're gonna share it. I think we're gonna get in contact with Newbury Weekly News uh, before the end of the week and try and get them to do a story. Um and yeah, just just share and share, maybe do some leafleting, you know, anything we can really. Mm. To get this so just in. just to remind people, you're currently um, on a farm quite close to here, but your t your lease is up, and yeah. reasons out of your control, you can't renew it. So yeah. you're looking for one or two acres. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we've kind of, the pigs and the sheep are kind of okay where they are. Um, so, yeah, one acre with water supply. Um, I mean, a stable would be brilliant with some electric, but it's not essential. Mm. Um, just somewhere remote, if someone's got a paddock they're not using that has a water supply, mm. that's all we need, really. Mm. Um, yeah. And and you can pay you can pay you know as a small yeah. rent you're not asking yeah. for it for free no no we can pay rent um it's just um having somewhere where you know someone's not not really using it for anything and they really want to help wildlife um you know we're rescuing sort of oh gosh 200 odd birds a year mm. um so yeah, I mean, just giving up for us isn't an option. You know, it's something we feel really passionately about, and I I don't want to have to even say the words, you know. But mm. um, if we don't find land soon, you know, um, we're going to be in real trouble. So okay, do do you have an actual cut off time date? No, we're really lucky that they're being really fair where we are at the moment. Um, uh, obviously they're like you know are you looking because it's all sort of changing hands where we are and there's all sorts of um, business things going on so um but we do have we do have a little bit of time but mm. yeah it's but but you lot. yeah you yeah it's it's not forever and and they need you out yeah. they're, they're not going to kick yeah. you out okay no okay. but they did say they did sort of say june july and we're, we're sort of you know yeah, that, we're getting you're there you're, you're getting there. Yeah. yeah, 
And even if you found somewhere tomorrow, it would take a while to sort out the absolutely. The move yeah, and I've set got people. Up. Yeah, I've got people there ready, waiting to help rebuild the sanctuary. So, um, you know, that's great. We've got loads of volunteers um, willing to to get it done from businesses and um, landscaping and things like that. So, um, yeah, we're we're ready to go. We just we just need the land now. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll. I, I've got a couple of ideas in mind that I'll I'll let you know and. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Amy, you've had a long day. I won't keep you any longer. Okay. No worries. Thanks, <laughs> buddy. Um, but well done. And so you are very generous with your time. You've been so helpful with me and my chickens. So no worries. No um, worries. If if anybody wants to contact you, they can find your Corvid Dawn facebook page yeah um and is your they can message you on that yeah they can message me on there or um and my mobile number is also on there um they can get it through there or they can get me through help wildlife uk okay brilliant site okay do you mind if we just share your mobile number here no that's okay fine. so it's oh seven five double three oh seven oh one five five and you're happy to talk to anybody who needs help even if you can't well you obviously can't take any more birds at this time but you can do a lot yeah. to support people over the phone yeah absolutely yeah. yeah lovely lovely super thank you so much amy well done no worries. Thanks, keep, Penny. keep going bye okay bye